Hey guys, are you ready to master Django and build powerful web apps like a pro? In this video I will share 8 tips that will help you learn Django. So whether you're a complete beginner or know a little bit of Python, these steps will get you from zero to deployment ready with Django. So grab a notebook and let's jump right in. Step 1. Learn the basics of Python. Since Django is based on Python, it's important that you know or understand a at least a little bit of how Python works. I want you to learn a little bit about variables, loops, functions and the basics of object-oriented programming. If you're not there yet, I want to I would have spent one or two weeks just brushing up on this, reading a little bit about of Python, try to create a few scripts, etc. Because if you know the basics of Python, the progress or the process of the rest of the steps will be much easier to understand. Step 2. So, step 2 will be to install and set up your environment. Don't worry, it's much easier than it sounds like. I've now opened up a console window here and the first thing I want to do here is to create a virtual environment. You do that by just in Python 3-m, venv and then env which will be the name of the environment. Uh, Python 3 is what I use on my Mac, m is just because I don't want to open up a Python console or what its interpreter maybe is called. Venv is the type of virtual environment that I want to create. It might be a little bit different on Windows, but uh, if, if you just try to Google it, you will probably find out how you do that. And then we hit enter. And when we have an, a Python environment, it's make, it makes it much easier to install Django on your computer. It makes it easier to install packages like Django REST framework or Pillow for images and similar. And when we have this, we can just say source env bin activate and then the name of the environment will be prepended before the name of the folder we are in that way i know that when i say pip now i will only install this package or django inside this environment so pip install django and hit enter so this will now install the newest version of django which is currently 514 it might be a little bit different based on when you go through this tutorial, but at least if it's newer than 5, you should be good to go. So now, boom, you are a Django developer. Or at least it's a good start, because now we have a Django environment we can work on. So since we have this environment ready now, let's just create an empty Django project so that's ready. Django-admin start project, oops, project um, testing. And then we can go into this and then you will see that there are a new file called manage.py which is sort of the brain of the whole project and if i run ls on the testing folder we get init.py which is just to make sure that this folder can be used as a module for django asgi is entry points for the web server you don't have to think about this uh, settings.py is a global configuration for your whole app this is where you configure your database where templates are located, um, users, and a lot of else, but again, you don't have to think about this yet. URLs.py is like a table of contents of your whole project. For example, you list out, uh, if you go to slash blog, you will go and find a view that will suit this. I will come back to that very soon. WSGI is the same as ASGI, it's just entry points for the web server, so when you go into this it will find the page for you etc. But I will add a link up in the corner where you can find out more about how Django works because I have created a better video about exactly this. Step 3 will be to understand MVT architecture. Django isn't like a typical web development framework. It's based on something called the MVT architecture, model, view, and template. You can think of it like this. The models handle your data, views handle your logic, and the templates handle what the user sees. Mastering this concept is crucial, and once it clicks, Django will become much easier to work with. Or you can think of it like this. The models describe what data we want to store in a database. Let's say you're building a blog. 
Then in here we have one model for the posts, where we have the title, the body, image and similar. So we just describe what these fields are inside the database. And then the view will be used to get the data from the model and then we can work with it. So we, for example, get a blog uh, or a post with a specific ID or similar. The view is also used to push this data into the template and the template will be rendering this inside the browser. So when you've done this a couple of times, it will make it much easier for you to understand. So step four will then be to creating the first view. So I'm going to open up this project in an editor. I like to use cursor or VS code. And then I have the testing folder here with the manage.py and testing there. In here, I can create a new file called views.py. And then I can say from django.http import HTTP response. Uh, this is just used to return an HTML string or a text string to the browser. Then create a view index, pass in the request parameter, which contains information about the browser, which page you are on, if you are authenticated, like the session, etc. Then I can just say return HTTP response testing hello and save. So uh, how do I now see this in the browser? Because you can't actually go to this. You need to go into the urls.py or the table of contents as I called it and map the URL to this view. So here I can begin by importing this view from views import uh, index. Maybe dot views because I'm in the same folder as this file. And then I can say path. Oops. And when the path is empty, I want to use the index view. And that's everything we need to do. Now we just need to run the local web development server, Python managed by run server. Then I can open up this here URL in a browser like that. And I will see testing hello. If I were to change the URLs to, for example, about, go back again, refresh, I will get a page not found, but I can go to about, and then I will see this again. So that is basically how the URL patterns are working. Step five will be to work with models and how they are talking to the database. But before I do that, I just want to create a Django app. A Django app or a Django project usually consists of multiple apps. So we can say Python manages by start app blog. And then I go back here and then I just need to re, uh, sorry, I need to register this with Django blog. So there are a few built in apps that comes with Django, like we have the admin interface, makes it possible to show static files or sessions for authentication and similar. And then at the bottom, I like to add my own custom apps. In here, we have a few new files. We have the views, where we typically have our views connected to blog, like the index page where we list out the blog post or the detail page, etc. Tests or for running tests um, for, to seeing that everything is working with automated tests. Models.py is where we store the model we're going to create soon. Apps.py is just configuration for this specific app. And admin.py is where we register our models with the built-in admin interface, which I will come back to very soon. But let's create a very simple model here. So it's a class. Uh, post or article, you can call it whatever you want. Pass in something called model.model .model because that tells Django that we want to extend the basic model class from Django. So if you learned a little bit about object oriented programming, you probably understand this as well. Then in here we can have a title which can be a models.char field, set the max length to be 255. So now we have a field where we can store the title. Maybe you also have a body, which can be a text field, which is usually much longer than a typical char field. And here you can have much more fields as well. But let's save this for now. And I have created a separate video about Django models, which I will link up in the corner, where you will learn about the best practices, learn about the different fields and similar. And when this is done, 
we want to run something called the migration uh, make migrations or the migration scripts which actually converts this model into sql and makes the django be able to talk to your database so here we say python manage.py make migrations so then you see we got one new file we can go and take a look at it here you can now see that we have a class migration and now django will loop through or iterate through this and create a database model for us to use then we just need to actually execute this by saying python manage.py uh, migrate so now we actually have a database that can be used in real life next is mastering django admin we shouldn't forget about django secret weapon the admin panel first we just need to run one command to create a super user who can access this so python manage.py create super user and then we have a username an email and then we can start the development server again python manage.py run server go back to the browser and go to slash admin now we can log in with the user we just created and there we have it as you can see we can't see the post model here yet so we just need to register this in the admin.py file so if i go back to admin.py in the blog app then we can import the model we created so from dot models import article and admin.site.register article so if i save now we'll go back and refresh you can see here that now we can start creating articles for our app so this is almost like magic and this is one of the reasons why people love django so this admin panel is very powerful and you should learn more about the features step seven will be to work with templates because we can't just continue working with http response like this and just return strings we want to show templates so we usually keep templates for the blog inside the blog app folder so here we just create a new folder called templates and django will actually find this folder automatically because it will always look for a folder called templates inside your apps in here we also want one more called blog just to separate each of the blogs oh sorry each of the apps from each other in here we can create one more file called index.html and this will then be the template to use this now we can create a new view inside the views.py file in the blog so then we say def index or uh, we can say blog def blog pass in the request parameter and say return a render so then we will use a shortcut that comes from django which takes a parameter called request so then this is just passed from here and down to there so we can use the request in the template as well and now we pass in blog slash index.html and that is how you use templates um, you can see that this folder is this folder inside the templates folder if we wanted to do something here we can say for example title I like hello to pass in a variable to the template title title oops like that so this is how you can pass in data into a template and to use this we can say title so this will then print the title into the browser there are a lot of more things that you need to know with the templates but this is a good start learn how to insert templates learn how to sorry learn how to insert variables how to loop through lists of blog posts and similar the last step which is number eight is to deploy your project i almost always just go for a simple solution which is to create my own server on DigitalOcean. I have some videos about this if you want to check them out. Um, there are some other services you can use like uh, Heroku, AWS, Google App Cloud and similar. If you want to test out DigitalOcean there is a link in the description below so you can test this out for I think it's 60 days or $100. And there you have it. These were eight steps now to learn Django. You have to dive deep into each of these steps but at least this is the roadmap you can follow to learn Django. 
from basic Python to deployment. You're now ready to build real-world web applications like a professional. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please hit like below, subscribe if you haven't done that already. If you have any questions or are stuck on a step, drop a comment below and I will answer as soon as I can. See you in the next video.